Welcome back to CCTV. Today is all about disclosing information. Some insights in part of the life of Benjamin Franklin that received little attention so far. An interview on state initiatives and ingredient communication. Highlights of the social event. A statement on Turkey. And breaking news on the location of Chemcon Europe 2020. But first some sound bites from the sessions on Europe with Roger Battersby. Today's session was about an update on the EU and um, UK uh, regulatory requirements. Um, what we know is that the EU is no longer the EU as we know it. Um, Brexit is likely to create two different chemicals registration systems, but in principle we don't know much more than that at this point in time. Um, for, from the perspective of the EU Commission, the whole REACH process is seen as a success story uh, with uh, a lot of improvements for environment and human health. Um, we've heard that there are um, more than 90,000 registrations uh, to date. Um, but one of the key issues is that um, a large portion of these are considered non-compliant and we heard from ECHA specifically um, about the action plans that they have to improve these. And finally, the key, um, key topics were basically all sorts of aspects around authorization and, and restrictions um, from many different angles, how to go forward, um, how it's addressed, how the process runs and um, that was for me uh, the most interesting part of the whole day. So today I uh, presented uh, the Commission's plans on a new uh, chemical strategy for sustainability that follows the calls in the European Green Deal. I think we are facing in front of us a very promising and challenging opportunity to uh, make our legislation stronger and more coherent and a uh, better place to face the challenges that we have uh, ahead of us to improve the level of protection of human health uh, and the environment but also to put our industry in the path for uh, more develop a higher uh, global competitiveness uh, in the path of, uh, of uh, more sustainable uh, chemicals. I also uh, recapped uh, on where we are with uh, microplastics and uh, what are the latest thoughts and, and actions on endocrine disruptors in Europe. If you're thinking of applying for authorization, I believe it's actually vital that you talk first to your customers and your suppliers of what would happen in case you did not get an authorization. In that's, that way you start to understand how important the function is of the substance that you're considering. And that way you actually start, the, in my view, the pre preparation for the application for authorization in a, in a very good manner. And you sort of start to really understand what is vital in the substance. Some uses might not be needed and therefore you don't have to apply. Second, uh, in, in ECA, we have, in the European Chemicals Agency, we have set up a notification system for anybody who wants to apply. And we have also a system called teleconference-based information sessions, meaning that we are happy to discuss with future potential applicants about the application process and therefore help out in, in, for new applicants to know what is really required to put into the applications. Uh, concerning restrictions, um, it is also important to look at the microplastics in terms of the bigger picture. We believe that, for instance, the way that we are setting it up gives a big boost to the alternatives, in particular biodegradable alternatives, and therefore actually is a source of innovation for uh, future uses of, of different kinds of materials. Time to connect with Mr. Franklin and see where he is. Is there another statue of you? Yes, it is, with George Washington in front of the Masonic Temple in Philadelphia. In 1873, uh, the same trowel was used to lay the cornerstone as our brother and President Washington used to lay the cornerstone of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Inside this building, your attendees learned quite a bit about Freemasonry last night. Before we go to the impression of the social event, can you explain our viewers a bit about Freemasonry? Absolutely. Come this way. In 1734, I was elected Grand Master of Masons in Pennsylvania. Masonry is the world's oldest and largest fraternity of men, bound together by oaths and conducted along the lines of uh, ancient stone mason craft guilds dating back to medieval times. Freemasonry is not a religion, although its members must profess a belief in a supreme being. 
The fraternity's primary goal is moral enlightenment of our members through education, camaraderie, charitable works, and meaningful rituals. These rituals are part of the spiritual journey. They are rich in allegory and symbolism, and they serve to guide the brothers' continual efforts at self-improvement. There are three degrees that a brother must pass through, entered apprentice, fellow craft, and master mason. Entered apprentices must learn about many of the Masonic symbols. For example, the all-seeing eye, the apron, and the square and compass. In our development, we focus on four cardinal virtues, temperance, fortitude, prudence, and justice. To help achieve good virtues, operative masons utilize a symbolic toolkit. Perhaps the most easily recognized of these tools is the square and compass. The square represents morality and truthfulness. To act honestly is to act on the square. The compass is meant to symbolize virtue as a measure of one's life and conduct. One aspect of Freemasonry which personally appealed to me was the chance to uh, interact with all levels of society or on the level. And I did notice quite a bit of interaction among your attendees last night in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Wonderful. We'll connect later again for your impression of the social event. But first we focus on ingredient communication in today's interview. Steve, can you explain in a nutshell um, these state initiatives? California, they've long been a leader on the variety of right to know laws. I think you know the most obvious is the long-standing Proposition 65, which concentrated on hazardous uh, toxicants, whether the carcinogens or reproductive toxins. But the recent, due to uh, consumer pressure and drive towards more, greater and greater degree of transparency, a better understanding towards ingredients and products, um, there's been a move towards focusing on there. And in 2017, they passed what's called the California Cleaning Products Right to Know Act, uh, which really expanded that portfolio, taking from just simply intentional, broadening it to the full intentionally added ingredients within formulations, as well as even in trace contaminants and unintentional ingredients. Uh, and it's about the same time New York State went forward with an initiative of their own under their existing authority to adopt a number of regulations, adopting similar but in some cases significantly different uh, regulations with respect to ingredient disclosure in New York State. Um, so that's probably the nutshell. Um, you know, there's certainly been a lot of interest in that and trying to make sure that the two of those are as lined as much as possible. Sherry, what are the challenges for companies in the uh, communication on the ingredients in their products? One of the main challenges for industry is protecting their confidential business information, their, their legitimate intellectual property. Companies invest a significant amount of resources into research and development, which benefits the consumer. It results in more efficacious products, results in novel products, it results in greener products, which are all of benefit to the consumer. And companies are very rational about their research and development investments. They want to make sure that they get a return on that investment. And, and in order to do that, they need to protect their intellectual property. So there needs to be a balance between transparency and getting information to the consumer, but at the same time protecting that research and development investment. The other big challenge, I think, is harmonization. Steve spoke about that earlier. And harmonization is essential because the companies that are selling these household and cleaning type products, commercial products, are selling them nationwide. Their websites are nationwide. And one thing it's imp I think it's important to realize is that the reach of the California law goes well beyond California. Again, the products are sold nationwide, the websites are accessible nationwide, and I, I think there's in many ways sort of a limited return on investment in any additional state that were to promulgate regulations. On our YouTube channel, you can watch the complete interview on ingredient communication and state initiatives in some of the current 50 states. In 1873, there were only 38 states. Let's go back to the Masonic Temple, where all 38 states are represented in the building. Mr. Franklin, where are you? Well, I'm in the Benjamin Franklin room at the Masonic Temple. Uh, comfortably furnished for members and their guests. A great place to sit and chat and tell stories from all around the world. As you know, uh, Masons come from all walks of life. Like the various characters in your books, Silence Do Good, Anthony Afterwit, and Poor Richard. Yes, and like the many attendees I got to meet at your social event last night. Please watch my impressions of the evening. 
Chemical the America's 2020 social event was held at the Masonic Temple in Philadelphia. A perfect venue for a perfect evening. Was everything perfect? No, because each room in the Masonic Temple has a deliberate imperfection to depict men's imperfection. At the start of the evening, our delegates could try to find these imperfections and other hidden treasures in the various rooms during a scavenger hunt. And at the same time, they could enjoy all the astonishing features of this extraordinary building. So an evening to remember with many highlights, including the announcement of the city to host Chemcon Europe 2020, a city well known to Benjamin Franklin. That's for later. First turkey in our statement of the day with Leo van der Bies of Royal Haskoning DHV. Leo, welcome. Nice to be here, Chet. Leo, in 2012 to 2014, uh, Royal Haskoning DHV implemented for the Turkish government the REIT regulation, KKDIC. This year you started a new project. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, we're once again working for the Turkish government, this time on the chemical safety assessment. New software is being developed for chemical safety assessments on the KKDIC. And we are doing a set of trainings for all the elements of the chemical safety assessment. We did a, a training need assessment for both the authorities and uh, industry. And now the programs are being developed and they will be given this in the course of this year. And your statement is? We expect that under KKDIC the chemical safety assessments will be of high quality. Leo, thank you very much for your statement and support. More on Turkey at Chemcon Europe 2020. Let's return to Benjamin Franklin and finally learn about the location of Chemcon Europe 2020. Egyptian Hall is a great place to tell you the location of the next Chemcon event. Egypt has always been known as a place of mystery. True and master masons like yourself are very good at keeping secrets. But this is a secret you can disclose. Okay, here we go. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state that nearly 14 billion years ago expansion started. Wait, it all started with the Big Bang. It's expanding ever out, but we it all started with the Big Bang. It all started with the Big Bang. It all started with the Big. Bang. That's the forecast for October, now the forecast of day 3 of the main program of Chemical the Americas in Philadelphia, with a lot of knowledge on Asia Pacific. As Franklin used to say, An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. In the morning we focus on the Asia Pacific region, with Korea, Japan, Malaysia, Southeast Asia, Australia and New Zealand. But also Turkey and the Eurasian region. Reach is coming! In the afternoon, a company perspective on chemicals management implementation. And we make a comparison of various new chemicals and polymer notification systems around the world, including business examples of CBI. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.